Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope you're all doing well. You know what, no matter how difficult our week has been, or how many problems we've had to face in our life, remember that we have to be at peace. Yep, that's our life app for the month. And actually, peace is way more about just being calm, quiet, and still. Peace is proving that you care more about each other than winning an argument. Isn't that the way you want other people to treat you? Making peace is a great way to build a bridge to someone else. Instead of letting disagreement and hurt get in the way, it's a great way to treat others the way you want to be treated. We've got another super cool story coming up about someone who had to decide if she could make peace. You're going to love it. But first, let's prepare our hearts and praise God together. Are you ready to sing? King David, he was a pretty famous guy. David was chosen to be the next king of Israel when he was just a young man watching over flocks of sheep. God had promised that David would one day be king. But in the meantime, King Saul still ruled Israel. Saul was jealous because David won battles and was very popular with the people. 
So Saul kept trying to capture or hurt David. As a result, David and his men spent most of their time living on the run. They had to move around a lot and hide from King Saul and his armies. It wasn't easy for David, but if he wanted to stay alive long enough to become king, he had to stay on the run from King Saul. One day, David and his men went down to the desert of Paran. They traveled near the land of a wealthy man named Nabal. Yes, that's right. There's another villain in this story, and it was Nabal. Nabal was very rude and mean, but he had a very wise and intelligent wife named Abigail. At first, Nabal's servants weren't sure what to think about David and his men. Nabal's servants didn't know if they could trust them. But David's men didn't do anything mean or steal from them. In fact, David protected Nabal's shepherds from harm. At a certain time of year, sheep get a haircut, you know, or maybe fur cut. They call it sheep shearing time. During that time, David asked 10 of his men to go speak to Nabal and give him a friendly hello. David told them, go up to Nabal at Carmel, greet him for me, say to him, may you live a long time. May everything go well with you and your family, and may things go well with everything that belongs to you. David also told the man to remind Nabal that they had been good to his shepherds and sheep. David said this, When your shepherds were with us, we treated them well. The whole time they were at Carmel, nothing that belonged to them was stolen. Ask your own servants, they will tell you. We've come to you now at a happy time of the year. Please be kind to my men. Please give me and my men anything you can find for us. That seems like a pretty normal thing to ask, right? I mean, David was just hoping Nabal would share some snacks while they were all celebrating. But you know what? Nabal said, no, big no, no. Can you believe that? David and his men had showed plenty of kindness to Nabal's servants, but Nabal had refused to give them any food in return. When David's men returned and told David what Nabal had said, David was angry. About 400 men went with David, looking for a fight. Nabal's servants could tell that this wasn't looking good. So a servant warned Nabal's wife, Abigail, about what Nabal had done. Abigail knew that she had to do something to help. Maybe if she made a gift for David, she could convince him to turn back instead of going after Nabal. Abigail didn't waste any time. She gathered supplies and loaded them on donkeys. She gathered bread, cakes, wheat, and grains. She told the servants to go ahead to David and his men and that she would follow them. When Abigail finally saw David and his men, they were marching through a mountain valley. She could tell that David was very angry. Abigail got off of her donkey and bowed down before David. She then took the blame herself. She said, it's written in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 25 to 26. Please don't pay any attention to that evil man Nabal. His name means foolish person. And that's exactly what he is. He's always doing foolish things. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to see the man you sent. Sir, the Lord has kept you from killing Nabal and his men. He has kept you from using your own hands to get even. So may what's about to happen to Nabal happen to all your enemies. May it happen to everyone who wants to harm you. And may it happen just as surely as the Lord your God and you are alive. Everyone was watching what David would do. Nabal had insulted him, but Abigail showed honor to him. Would that be enough to keep the peace? Abigail continued. It's written in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 28, 30 to 31. 
The Lord your God will certainly give you and your family line a kingdom that will last. That's because you fight the Lord's battles. The Lord will do for you every good thing He promised to do. He'll appoint you rule over Israel. When that happens, you won't have this heavy load on your mind. You won't have to worry about how you kill people without any reason. You won't have to worry about how you got even. The Lord your God will give you success. When that happens, please remember me. Abigail stood there waiting to see what David would say. After a moment, he smiled. He said, Give praise to the Lord. He is the God of Israel. He has sent you today to find me. May the Lord bless you for what you have done. You have kept me from using my own hands to get even. Abigail had made a stand. She had saved the day. David accepted Abigail's gifts and told her to go home in peace. In the end, Nabal died. He paid a high price for his foolish and angry response to David. But God blessed Abigail. She had chosen to humble herself and do the hard work of making peace. Abigail understood that you can show you care about others by being part of the solution. Abigail wasn't the one who caused the problem. She wasn't involved in the fight. But she got involved so that she could make peace. She chose to be a part of the solution. Will you pray with me, kids? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your wonderful words. We learned about how to make peace to others, Lord. Lord, give us the ability and the skill to always uh, be the part of the solution, Lord, especially when someone uh, are in fight with others, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, to always be the peacemaker. Thank you, Jesus. We pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's pop quiz time! This week, we're going to play a game of multiple choice. I'll ask you a question and you can shout out loud whether it's A, B, or C based on the Bible story you just heard. Are you ready? Okay, here's the first one. David and his men went down to the desert of Paran. They traveled near the land of a wealthy man. What was the name of this wealthy man? Was it Tony Stark? Nabal or Jesus? Did you guess Nabal? Because that's the correct answer. Okay, here's the next question. What were the Israelites doing to their sheep in today's story? Were they getting them a haircut? Throwing them to the lake? Or playing frisbee with them? They were getting them a haircut. You got it. All right, here comes the last question. Who was Abigail? Was she David's arch nemesis, King Saul's cousin, or Nabal's wife? I hope you guessed Nabal's wife because Abigail was his wife. Oh, there she is. Hi, Abigail. Good job answering the questions, IES kids. Thanks for playing pop quiz with me. Hello everyone, I am teacher Yuli. I'm so excited to be with you today. Let's do the memory verse of the month together. So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14 verse 19. Let's read together one more time. So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14 verse 19. Sometimes being part of the solution is hard work. When has it been hard to make peace in your school or neighborhood? What about on your sports team or after your school group? There will always be a reason not to make peace but don't forget that you can show you care about others by being part of the solution. So friends, don't forget, let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. See you in May.
Hey ice kids, you know what? In science, any liquid can be called a solution because you can dissolve or mix things into it. So we are going to make a solution while talking about solutions. You get it? <laughs> no? Okay, let's just try it, okay? Let's make some liquids I have here. So here, I have vinegar and then I have cooking oil and I have mustard. So let's open this and I'm going to pour the vinegar first. Mmm, that's pretty strong. Now, let's pour the cooking oil. Let's close the lid and shake, shake, shake. So, what do you notice about our solution of just vinegar and oil? Do they stay mixed together after we stop shaking it? Let's just see. No, they don't mix at all. Can you see that? This is the vinegar and on top of it is the cooking oil. Sometimes it's just like people. Sometimes people cannot get along. They're like oil and vinegar. They just don't mix. That's life, right? So now, let's add some mustard. Mm. And let me close it and shake, shake, shake. Wow. What do you see? What happened when I added mustard to the oil and vinegar? Yes, they mixed. The oil, vinegar, and mustard mixed. And now we have delicious salad dressing. Mmm, yum, I just need to add some vegetables, right? The mustard helped mix the oil and vinegar together. There's some cool science involved here. The mustard basically made peace between the oil and vinegar. Now, the ultimate peacemaker is God, who made peace with us. But each of us can be peacemaker, just like mustard, when we choose to step in and make peace. You can show you care about others by being part of solution. And they might separate again. That's just like people, right? So the next time you see things headed for a breaking point, step in and be like mustard. Be part of the solution. In our Bible story today, Abigail moved quickly to make peace with David. She didn't wait around to see a fight between her husband and David's men. No, Abigail decided to be a part of the solution and saddled up those donkeys with gifts. Sometimes we try to stay out of things when we don't want to risk getting made fun of or maybe we're scared that we're going to get in trouble ourselves. But sometimes the best thing to do is act. Do something to build peace before it's too late. For example, let's say you're at school and you know one of your friends is upset with a teacher and she plans on making a big scene in the class. You could just sit back and watch her do her thing, then get in trouble, or you could act to make peace. What could you do? Maybe help her calm down and think through the situation. Maybe give the teacher a heads up, but not in a tattletale way. So you have a choice when you know people aren't getting along. You can show you care about others by being part of the solution. So friends, let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. 
God bless you all. You're my courage. I don't have to be afraid. You're my fortress. No matter what comes my way. You're my treasure forever. Yes, we'll be together always. Even when the days get harder, I know you'll rescue me. Even when the sky is dark. This verse talks about. Wash. 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 We've also got some other things there, which is in other picnic basket. I love the ice. <laughs> now that's the spirit. Hey, you know what? I'm hmm. kind of hungry. <laughs> okay. Let's play a game to remain. It's the new week of the new month of. No. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Daniel. There's nothing there. <laughs> as high as you can and shut. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, hello there, friend. Ugh, it's tag. Lord, help us to keep our cats cool down, right? <laughs> Show me your excited face. I'm going to call up my good friend, Dan. <laughs> right here, right now. Bah! <laughs> and I was just finish up. A Another second, second. So let us do in. <laughs> I don't want to beat up. Salah. <laughs> okay. Today, we will find out about someone who had the. I was so close, and then I forgot what I was supposed to say. Okay. Hmm. Oh, hi, friend. <laughs> Stop. It's a new week, and sheep get a haircut or fur cap. <laughs> Cut! Oh my gosh, I think I got it! After a thousand tries. I know you bring me peace. You are my strength.